Hello, this is John Tesler here with GeekyCool.com, and I'm interviewing special effects artist extraordinaire Russ Adams. Russ, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Russ. Um, I do feature feature design and special effects and tinkering. <laughs> what got you interested in doing special effects work? Um, I kind of was like. I grew up in the 80s, and so they called kids like me, like creature kids. We would tear toys apart, figure out how they worked, and build something better in place of that toy. At least we felt like we did. And it just became a thing, and it was something I wanted to do. I wanted to make movies, and and uh, the big sell for me was an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood where they went behind the scenes, and they were interviewing uh, Lou Ferrigno. And because you know, Mr. Rogers was all about pretend, you know, and he wanted to show kids that the Incredible Hulk was pretend. And they transformed Lou Ferrigno into the Incredible Hulk. And I was hooked from that point on. Um, like for me growing up, one of my favorite special effects artists was Ray Harryhausen mm -hmm. for his stop motion. Oh, yeah. For, you know, Jason the Argonauts, Boy of Sinbad, Clash of the Titans. Um, did he impact your Oh, life? yeah. Those movies were amazing. I mean, and, and the way they moved and articulated, there was a creepy feel to it just because it was stop motion. So that appealed to me. Um, as I got older, you know, uh, it was like guys like Dick Smith and uh, obviously Stan Winston, you know, those guys started to make a, a huge impact on the things that I wanted to do. You've done a lot of creature creation. So I'm guessing Rick Baker is one of your idols. Yeah, I like Rick. Yeah, um, it's too bad he retired. But, you know, I mean, it was, yeah, he, he created some amazing stuff. Um, Steve Wang, uh, I'm trying to think of all of them flooding back, you know. <laughs> um, there's just so many of them. Sometimes you don't get a chance to mention them all. But, yeah, there's a lot of influencers that, uh, that kind of forced my hand into a style or whatever. Okay, because you're not a member of SAG, so we can talk about certain things. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed you've done a lot of work with Jim Henson's Creature mm -hmm. Shop. Now, of course, growing up, Henson was one of the biggest in the land for puppets and things like that. Mm -hmm. What was your experience like working with him? Um, I, I never really got the chance to work with Jim because he passed away years and years ago. But working with the company was a lot of fun. Um, we did a show called the, the Jim Henson Creature Shop Challenge. And uh, we essentially were tasked with building these film uh, quality creatures and film ready creatures in like two to three days. And when I say two to three days, <laughs> you, you get the idea, it was like 48 hours. No, it was like about eight hours of work both, both days. So, I mean, it was, it was a fast paced project. And we got to work with what they called the shop masters, which was, you know, the guys who had been there for years. And uh, it was it was incredible, especially just walking in to the creature shop and seeing your childhood just pasted on the walls was just everything from Skeksis, you know, to uh, where the uh, so where the wild things you know, uh, I'm going to mess that up, where the wild things are or live or whatever. The, the creatures that they built are up on the wall. And, oh, the dinosaurs. <laughs> it was like, do you remember the dinosaurs, the animatronic, you know, kind of, yeah, they were there. I mean, it was just, it was, it was, it was thrilling at the, at the childhood core of a person. <laughs> but we had so much fun on that show. Um, I noticed you did a lot of work with Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, there was a lot of people doing a lot of stuff on Pirates. Uh, they were filming in Utah in the Salt Flats area. And so there was a lot of us doing different things. I played with a lot of skeletons and and drug a lot of them back to my shop and ended up having to try to like get rid of them on eBay because I didn't have the storage capacity for all these things. But yeah, it, projects like that are a blast because, you know... Um, you know, Johnny Depp is a is an amazing guy in person, and so getting to work even near him was was was, was incredible. But. Have you d mostly done creatures? Have you mm -hmm. done like background 
And oh yeah, like you kind of do a little bit of everything. You know, you um, you see. So the goal is always to create the creatures and stuff for most of us, but sometimes you know you're relegated to like costuming, and and I, I don't use relegated as a means to de demean that particular profession. It's just. It's something that you know you have to you have to learn and you have to, to to work on. Sometimes you can't always do the things that you want to do. So set design, weapons creation. When I say weapons creation, I mean the the the, the faker stuff, not the, uh, the the live ammo stuff or the really sharp blades. But um, you know, I'm trying to think of some of the some of the things that we've done. You know, rock walls. We if for one project we had to build these uh, these enormous castle walls. And we all we had was like plywood and styrofoam, and we're doing this old school, and it was a great learning experience. But we're lucky somebody didn't get killed on that set. <clears throat> For somebody that wants to get into special effects, um, what would be a good direction for them to go as far as starting out and moving their way up? It it depends. Like a lot of people want to put all their eggs in one basket, and they just want to be sculptors. But what they, you know, what they tend to forget is like sculptors are a dime a dozen in Hollywood. So you need to, you know, make yourself available in other areas like mold making and you know hair punching and maybe wig making, makeup, all those things. You have to be as well rounded as possible to make sure that you get in the door. Um, to start, you know, it started with me just tearing things apart, seeing how they work and then putting them back together in maybe a different way, you know, failing a bunch of times, you know, but you're learning at the same time. So, you know, those, that's basically what I would suggest. Just keep tearing things apart, you know, pissing your parents off, breaking your toys, making something new, and just, you know, basically just keep doing that. And get as much education as you can, especially free education. Lots of stuff on YouTube that you could be, you know, looking at and emulating and, 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 and things like that don't necessarily have to put down a lot of money to learn. You know, I came from a time frame where I learned with a magnifying glass and um, a copy of Fangoria magazine and the, the lucky chance that might there might be a suit that was being built that you got to see the inner parts. And I'd be just like, you know, just eyeballing it with a magnifying glass, just trying to see how it went together and then spending tens of thousands of dollars on my own money, failing in the endeavor of recreating that, you know, because materials are expensive, and then finally getting it right and getting my foot in the door. Well, I know that the strike, everybody's looking at the writers and the actors, but they don't realize that this is affecting everybody in the industry. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you've got, people that do craft, people that do special effects, mm -hmm. compositing. I mean, you're all basically stuck right now. Oh, yeah. It's completely, like, um, if you've had gigs on the table, they are probably been shut down because they don't know when they're going to start. And so we're all on pause waiting for somebody to make a decision. So, you know, that, that means people who don't, you know, uh, prescribe to a union, you know, are affected and... You know, this is their livelihood as well. So, you know, the pressure is coming from all of us, you know, to just, you know, fix it, you know. Um, I noticed going through Google this morning, brushing up on some of your background, you have Pinterest pages, yeah. eBay, you know, do you do any anything like Facebook or anything like that? Yeah, I, I, I do... I kind of keep it a little more social on Facebook because it's like the worst place to try to advertise for anything. Um, you know, um, I do a lot of TikTok stuff where I'm doing uh, um, uh, like how to's, you know, I'll do like little segments on how, how something is put together. I've got this one thing that I call, um, you know, uh, talking shop about, you know, special effects terms and phrases and things that you should know about working in a shop you know, like different words that we might use that sound ludicrous for something, but, you know, you kind of have like under skull, like as if a skull wasn't already under, you know, you had to put under skull in the list. And so, 
you know, I kind of throw those things out there. I'm more on TikTok, I think, than Instagram, or uh, I, I don't do Twitter at all. But yeah, but you can find me on Facebook, TikTok. I mean, the occasional Instagram post. But. Thank you for taking part of your time and no spending problem. it with Geeky Cool. Thank you.